Let's have a quick candid chat just before I pick the kids up from school because I've got a little bit of time. I just wanted to talk about a couple of things. Um, America, okay? I've got some friends who recently got back from a sort of dream trip, the kind of trip that you you save money for and then you go on it and then you come home and you tell everybody that it was the best thing ever because you saved up money to go on this once of a lifetime trip. And they did some things that I've done before, but I did many years ago. So I was really interested to see how they got on. They went to um, Los Angeles and San Francisco and Disneyland. It was like one of these dream trips. Let's go to LA, let's go to San Fran and let's do Disneyland as many people do. So I have done, I haven't done Disneyland, fair enough, not my cup of tea, doesn't appeal at all. But I've spent a bit of time in Los Angeles and I've spent a bit of time in San Francisco. But I think I did it mm, around about a decade ago, possibly a bit more, possibly a bit less. Now, when I went to LA, you could walk down the strip, is it Hollywood Boulevard, where all the stars are on the floor, and it was relatively safe back then. You know, there were hawkers and people trying to get you to buy CDs and stuff. And there were lots of people pretending to be things and trying to get money. And then we, but it was okay. You know, like at no point in Los Angeles did we feel threatened or anything like that. In San Francisco, in my experience, it was fine. We didn't really see anything untoward in San Francisco when I was there. And I quite enjoyed my time in San Francisco and I was looking forward to going back. We stayed in a hostel. The people in the hostel were friendly. Um, same in Los Angeles, actually. I think we stayed in a hostel in Los Angeles and just it was all fine. You know, people were friendly. You get chatting to people. It was sweet. But the girls who returned just the other day, um, I said to them, how was your trip? And the answer was, well, it was all right. I said, what do you mean? It was it was all right. You've just been on like a dream trip. And basically, it seems like, and there's a lot of YouTube channels that have covered this, but America has fallen completely. And I didn't realize just how bad things had gotten in Los Angeles and San Francisco. Even though I know that things have gotten bad. <laughs> it sounds odd, but I follow a lot of accounts on Instagram and I keep an eye on, on what's going on in these places and I'm aware of the impact that drugs and homelessness and the kind of post-COVID San Francisco stuff. I know it's going on. I didn't realise it was quite as bad as it is, though. So the girls were saying that the streets of San Francisco, like all of San Francisco, is almost out of bounds by the sound of it. And correct me in the comments if I'm wrong and if the girls got it wrong on their holiday but by the sounds of it, what's happened is downtown San Francisco is full of offices. Post-COVID, nobody has returned to the offices. So the other thing that shocked me in what they were saying, other than the fact that people are doing fentanyl in the streets and there's zombies everywhere and everywhere you go felt dangerous in both LA and San Francisco. So all the places that I went in LA, like Hollywood Boulevard, is now just an absolute dive. Even uh, Santa Monica Pier, which again, I was pretty disappointed about because Santa Monica, Santa Monica Pier, you know, iconic. Um, but these places have just absolutely gone to the dogs. Um, drugs, fentanyl particularly, has absolutely ravished the United States. And the fact that San Francisco is now like almost a no-go area, what do you do with that? If you're the sort of person that bought property in San Francisco, how does that work? And how does it work for, you know, LA? Everybody wants to go to LA. Everybody wants to buy a house in LA. Well, I guess now you just live in your gated community and you hope that your security guard on the door of your gated community or, or the gate um, keeps everybody out. So America has sort of completely fallen and San Francisco and Los Angeles are not the worst of it I know there's a lot of bad stuff going on in like Philadelphia and just all over everywhere the nation is you know for people to come back from a holiday a dream holiday to Los Angeles and San Francisco and say they didn't feel safe they couldn't order food because they ordered food the one night and although they paid for it it never arrived and then they just didn't eat 
because <laughs> what like the guy never delivered it and the restaurant wouldn't sort it out so they just didn't eat for a night like how how can how can this be a thing and then if you juxtapose that with the fact that so much money has just been sent by the usa to mm, i don't know ukraine well we've got a broken country that needs money and investment and time and attention sending money abroad somewhere else so everything is broken at home but you're sending all the money somewhere else and that seems to sort of be the way things are at the moment it's it's the same in the uk but it's not the same because i don't think we have maybe we do do we have cities like san francisco and los angeles that are just now completely broken like no-go areas when we were in the usa we saw lots of police in fact one of my big takeaways from my holiday 10 years ago was that there were police everywhere in the usa i mentioned this to the girls about their trip they just came back from they said they didn't see a single police officer in um san francisco and i think in la and the only one they did see was in like a big shopping mall so Maybe I need to pay more attention to what's going on, what's actually going on in San Francisco and Los Angeles. Because as I said, although I'm aware of it, I didn't realise it was quite so bad. It sounded like they had a pretty horrendous holiday and were glad to be home. And at one point, they decided they were going to cut the holiday short. So these pin-up places, the places that we want to go, because we've seen them in movies for years... Um, None of them are going to be worth visiting, are they? So when you've got major problems at, at home, like the USA has with these cities, what's going on? Like, how can it have gotten so bad? And I know there's, like I said, there's a lot of stuff you can watch about what's happened in San Francisco since COVID um, and how the place has basically just become overrun with almost a plague of homeless and drug people. Um, and it just sounds like the zombie apocalypse that the preppers have been prepping for i think maybe it's already here but it's only here in certain places and maybe there's not gonna be you know with the whole prepping zombie apocalypse thing we sort of feel like we're gonna get our, our, our prepping supplies ready and we're gonna be ready and we're gonna know the moment when you then are surviving a zombie apocalypse but what if the zombie apocalypse is actually already here and it's just like we haven't realized that the zombie apocalypse movie has started like they've started rolling the cameras and we're sort of waiting for everybody we're waiting for somebody to say action but we've already started we've got people dropping like flies in the uk and elsewhere um we know that we've got major problems with I'm going to say too much on it because this is YouTube, but the AstraZeneca thing was all over the front page of the Telegraph a few days ago. And those of us that follow, there's a great account on Instagram called Died Suddenly Worldwide. I can recommend following, or don't follow it because it's grim. It's really grim. Um, we all know people who have lost their lives. We all know people who are getting ill. And maybe the zombie apocalypse has already started not just off the back of people doing too many drugs and all ending up in the same city, not just off the back of people not having any money and becoming homeless and all ending up in the same city, but people literally becoming zombies around us. And just while I'm on the zombie thing, maybe the zombies are the people who are sleepwalking into this grim dystopian future and not realising just how bad things are getting around them. Maybe the zombie apocalypse isn't so much people dying in the street from heart attacks or fentanyl or homelessness or turbo cancer. Maybe the zombies are the people that can't see all of that. Maybe that's what it is. Anyway, I was just a quick little um, chat to camera because I, I just wanted to address, uh, yeah, the, the girls, my friends experience in san francisco and los angeles have you been recently do you know any more can you furnish my comment section with any further details on exactly what these places are like because uh, it seems to me like in the last decade they've both just become real hell holes and what other cities are there that are becoming like that are there any examples in the uk 
where it's where it's getting like that? Are there any no-go areas in the UK? Centre of Birmingham springs to mind. Parts of London, absolutely, spring to mind. Um, you tell me in the comments. Because, you know, the great American road trip, the American dream, no more. Or I'm totally wrong. And actually, the east coast of America is where it's at. And, you know, I know that I've got people in the comments from, from Maine on the, on the east coast. And I'd love to go and see some more of the United States. And I don't want to be put off by these things that I am hearing from various people. So correct me in the comments if indeed America has fallen and if the American dream is over. Um, and do you think Hunter S. Thompson was a paedophile? Someone put that in one of my comments this morning. I, I quite like Hunter S. Thompson, as you well know from watching the channel. There are some questionable things about his behaviour, and he did hang out with some questionable people. It kind of goes with the territory of being a sort of Hollywood kind of journalist. Um, I don't know, but when you read a lot of Hunter S. Thompson's stuff, as I have, there are certain sentences and certain paragraphs that you read them and you think, that's kind of hard to make sense of. Um, there's one particular bit that springs to mind where he's, I think he's sat in traffic and a girl of an unknown age crosses the road and there's quite a lengthy description about him admiring the shape of her spine. I remember reading it and thinking, that is, that is odd. But obviously, I would like to think that Hunter S. Thompson is one of us. Um, you know, like to ex see things and expose things and bring bad things and shine a light on the darkness one of these sort of freedom fighter authors characters but i know there's a lot of bad stuff about his personality and the way he lived his life and the way he did certain things so i'm i'm more than willing to be corrected and to um take my love of hunter s thompson and drop it in the bin or trash or garbage if you're watching in america if if i feel that that there's a need to do that but yeah um jury's out on that one i did have a little research this morning couldn't necessarily find any conclusive answers but there's questions to be asked there's also some now that we've gone on to this sort of american themed hunter s thompson stuff there's some interesting stuff about his alleged suicide as well um there are some areas of the internet that think that he didn't actually kill himself but perhaps that's something for another video at some point in the future but there we go a little a little bonus midday video uh has america fallen is this have we seen the death of the american dream and where is the hope these days is there anywhere in the world that you look and think they're doing it right is there anywhere in your country or any country where you're looking at stuff and going yeah they've got the right idea that is working because it's quite hard in the uk at least to sit and point at anything that is actually working. Thanks for watching.